What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to somewhat of a first for me. This is my reaction to Dreamcatcher's Apocalypse Save Us album, the whole album. And so it's a little bit of a longer video. I'm breaking it up into two parts. I'm going to do the group songs and then I'm going to do the solo songs in another video. Also, as this being a first, I listen to music very, very differently, I would say. So when I listen to a song, I love to listen to it over and over and over and over again. And then I pick out parts and it just makes me appreciate songs that much more. So so my reactions, hopefully they're good, we'll have to see. But at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about each of the songs and what I like about them, and I'm not going to rank them, I'm just going to talk about what I like. So with that being said, let's get to reacting to Dreamcatcher's Apocalypse, Save Us. I've also changed shirts, you will see. I recorded this on multiple days, so there's a lot of wardrobe changes, don't be alarmed. Yeah, it's just like a big drone. We got some organs. Sounds like Super Mario World, like a cat. It's like the castle. It's a castle uh, levels in Super Mario World. At first I thought that was like a gun sound, like, you know, like a shotgun reloading, but it sounds like a piece of tape. It sounds like a gun sound. And I like this theme. Very like real instruments yeah that's really cool all right next up it's a very interesting progression like the very bouncy piano makes me feel like a musical And just like one of the things I love about Dreamcatcher B-Sides is that it's just so not their typical genres. So it's not really like EDM or rock. They kind of just like play around with any kind of genre that they want. And this feels, I don't even, it's kind of got a little bit of a funk feel to it. It almost reminds me a little bit of black and white, not as uh, upbeat, but still sort of in the same pocket as black and white. Just like very, it's like laid back, funky. <laughs> The intro started like it was very, it's like a, it was almost like a musical. The chorus though, the chorus comes and it's just like, I don't know, maybe I have to listen over and over again to really kind of get the flow of it. I don't know. I don't know if I, I'm like super vibing with it right now. Just that transition from pre-chorus to chorus. They're both great, like both of the parts by themselves, but just that transition. I don't know. Let's go again. Super long. It's just like very, it's so different. It's so oh. old. <laughs> I love that, those harmonies. Hey, 
I just love those that piano. Both Jian and Yu Hyun, when they're when they're doing like their sort of runs or like ad libs over top of the chorus, I, it's just so so good. Those two shine, especially in this song for me. Like they both kind of take turns. First it's Jian, and then Yu Hyun over top of Jian. <laughs> And then this is just like really cool. It's just kind of takes me back to like musicals again. All of them. Very like mysterious. I love that song. That's it's a good song. You know, the, the transition from the pre-chorus to chorus is a little jarring, but it's still just so funky. Like, I think it's just like a really cool, funky song. Am I am I going to not like a song on this album? No, but I'm going to say that I really like it. So next up, let's let's listen to Starlight. OK, Ooh, it's like. The weekend, the midnight. Super synth pop. Can you not just see, even just those, you know, four seconds in, can you not just like envision like GTA Vice City or just like some sort of like 80s themed show or movie or something and you're just like driving down, the sunset's going down and you hear this? It's so good. You make it you make an 80s synth song. And then you know when especially when you have just that kick and bass and then it goes into the second verse, the second part of the verse and you just double up on that hat and it just it adds a little bit momentum, it adds a little bit more just high frequencies and it just it gets you going. Oh, I just love just like those small things. All this needs is like just like a saxophone. If there's a saxophone. <laughs> this is like, oh man. So, so synth pop. I love it. It's like, it, it's almost could be like an aerobic song. Like, <laughs> nice little uh, mix up in the percussion. I don't know what synth that is, but it's just kind of the, it's kind of like air. It's like an air synth that just is like a sweeping sort of air synth. That it feels like it's like, it's like you're driving. It's like the wind, the wind when you're driving. I don't know. That's how I'm trying to put it together. So like simplistic too. Oh God, it's so good.
Gonna strip everything away. Oh, I... So this is the outro. This is like the end of the song, which kind of threw me off. I thought that this was the bridge and then we're going to get one more chorus after this. But this is just kind of the, the outro of the song. Really, really like it because it is very different from the whole song. So it changes up a lot. But God, would it have been so cool if like under this outro, you know, you have just like a soft saxophone, like really far in the back. And then you go back into the chorus one more time and then you have this 80s saxophone. And that piano is just like so beautiful. And it's, just, it's over like man that it is a it's a great ending because it does one of the things that I love. It just makes you want more of the song. It's like the song didn't go on for too long. It just makes you want to like listen to the song again. Keep listening to other songs. That is it's a good ending. But again, I just wanted that saxophone. So different genres so far. It's so cool. Like, none of the songs sound similar whatsoever. <laughs> Dami's voice, and like when she starts off, it's very like if I was not was like watching this and seeing that it was Dami singing, I don't think I would have placed her voice because it's very, very high. It's it's gorgeous, like it's it's a very good tone, but it's just it's so different from what I'm used to hearing from her. Yeah. Very, very poppy. I love how the bass, love how the bass just like goes down. It's like going downstairs. And usually in pre-courses, you know, they sweep up, but this one starts off and it's just like going down. Oh yeah. I don't know what to put, like, I don't know what kind of, this is just like very K-pop. Again, Dami in this in this whole song, very high. I really, really like the chorus. I love, oh man, I think Dami's my favorite in this song.
I really love this kind of stuff, like especially in the last chorus where they they kind of strip away some stuff and then they kind of build it back up. It's just it, I don't know why I don't know why I like it, but I just love when they kind of do that because it's just it you hear their voices a little bit more, especially at the very beginning, and it's just is different. And so I always like those kinds of things. <laughs> I could have I could have done with like a little bit more of a, a big sweep into the full chorus because they just kind of bring in the the bass and the drum. They bring in they bring in a couple of parts and yeah, I could have just had like a little bit more of a transition from the two different choruses, but nitpicking. I'm you know I'm nitpicking. I love this part. Very cool. Very, very cool. That's probably like the most pop song I've heard of Dreamcatchers. Obviously, I haven't listened to everything of theirs. So maybe there's some other songs that kind of are closer to this genre wise. Really, really cool. I still love how four songs in and none of the genres are similar. That is awesome. First slow song of the album. Unless it just like turns. So we do have a ballad. Have they ever done like a, a ballad? Like just piano. I was looking at the lyrics a little bit this time. It looks like it's a love song. Always. It obviously kind of like has already the title is kind of like always with this person. It's just so tough to stop and try and talk about it because I just want to listen. I'm just so captivated by their voices because I've said this before is but like in all of their other songs, you know, there's a lot of production and the production's great and their voices are great, but it, and it just like mixes so well. There's just a lot of things going on. But with this, it's just like their voices in a piano and you're just kind of pulled in and you just are transported to just listening to them it's i don't know i love it yeah like beautiful lyrics in your eyes i can imagine a universe we're getting into some very good lyrics This is like, you know, this is, I was looking at the lyrics again. This is a quintessential like wedding song. And you know, you could just picture it. This is the wedding song and, it, and it's beautiful, but that's just like what I'm getting from it right now. Or like in a in a K drama, I could see this being being played. I love that. I love that the first verse is just this raw, just mostly piano and a little bit of strings. And then we get into the more produced side of the song. We get uh, some like bass drums and, and it just feels fuller, but it just has that nice like progression over the whole song. It's just like 
I don't know. It's just so good. <laughs> I would just love like even a part with just their voices, like not even the piano, even just like a, a couple of bars, especially when all of them are singing, just have nothing and then like swing back into the, the, the piano or the, like the music. I think that would be, that would sound really cool. Even like right here, that would sound good. And then it's like, then you start like bouncing to it. You feel, you feel the rhythm. Right when they go into this bridge, it feels so like 90s R&B, pop R&B. It feels almost like, you know, when there's that break in the song and then like the, the, the artist will turn to the camera and be like, baby, you know, oh, look at me every time. It's just like, it feels like one of those where they don't sing, they just like talk. <laughs> that transition just made me think of that. I love those ad libs in the back. And then everything just sweeps away and then you just get the piano again. Oh. I love that they uh, introed the song and then extra the song with this or outro. Beautiful, like, I don't know, one of the most beautiful K-pop songs I've heard. I love, I love this song because it's so different from like the rest of the album. Like you're listening to the album and it's all very upbeat. You got some rock songs, you got some funk, and then you just have this awesome, awesome ballad, which is kind of like it's the it's their last of the solo songs, like chronologically on the album. So that's really cool. It's just like a showcase of their voices. I do like that they have... They, like, they don't, I don't think they have an outro for this album. And so I feel that this is kind of the outro. We have the intro and then this is the outro before all of their solo songs. So it's almost like they have like two albums in one album. <laughs> yeah, cause it, it, it's called Skit. It's called Skit, The Seven Doors. It's kind of like this transition in the album to the seven girls, and now they have their seven solos. I think that's what this... Okay. Not expecting this.
Oh. That's it. And then, huh? That's really cool. I feel that, well, I don't know. I feel that they shouldn't have called this skit. They should have called this like intermission. In my mind, I think intermission would have made a lot more sense. Intermission, the seven doors, because then it's like, here's here's the part, here's like the break in the show. You had their group songs and then you had all of their solos, but it is what it is. So that was cool. So that concludes all of the group songs of Apocalypse Save Us. This album was so diverse. These group songs, not a single similar genre. We go from Locked in a Door, which is kind of like a little bit of jazz. It feels a little bit of jazz club mixed with like, some musical like musical stuff there was just so much going on in that in that song and at first i have to say i don't know if i if i liked it i was like the chorus was a little uh, weird and then i kept listening to it i was like going on walks i was listening to it over and over and over again and it just like as like an earworm it just like buried itself into my brain and it's like one of my favorite songs of the group songs it is so so good i love i love it i love just everything about it. I love when you listen to a song at first and you're like, eh, it's okay. I don't know. I mean, it's not my thing. And then you listen to it more and more and you find all of these different things that you love so much about it. Next up, Maison. Obviously, the title track. I didn't react to it in this video, but you can check out my reaction to it. I'll put it in the description as well. 10 out of 10 song. 10 out of 10 comeback. It is just so good. I love everything about that song. I love the message. I love the production. I love the vocals. I love the bridge. I think the bridge is probably my favorite part because it's so different and there's just so much going on. Love that song. And then that brings us to Starlight, which is probably my favorite of their solo songs because it has that 80s synth pop feel. It almost feels like the like the Midnight or the Weekend could have like co-produced this kind of song. Just so good. Feels a little bit like aerobic in some spots. Here's my cat. He's making a guest appearance. The one thing that I wish they could have done to Starlight is like somewhere in the bridge, somewhere in the last chorus, just had a saxophone. That would have been, it would have made it probably like my favorite K-pop song of all time if they just had that if they just had the saxophone next up we got together next up we got together which is a very poppy k-pop song and i didn't really expect it from dreamcatcher most of their songs you know kind of are rock or edm got a little bit of jazz somewhere in between but this was just like straight up k-pop and it really worked it kind of reminded me a little bit of twice a little bit of what twice has done they kind of did their own sort of spin on it i loved i think my standout for together was dami's vocal because honestly if I did not know that she was singing, I would not know that that's her. Her voice was so much higher that I thought that she could sing and it, it was gorgeous. So that was really, really, really cool. And then that brings us to the last of their group songs, always the ballad song that just took my breath away. Like what more can you say? It is a gorgeous, gorgeous song. I love the, the not lack of production, but I love the minimalist of it where it's mostly just their vocals and maybe some pianos. And then we get a little bit more kind of poppy in the back, but just a gorgeous song and like an amazing message, an amazing just love song. I think that just about sums up what I have to say about their group songs. I love how different each song is. I just love that. I love that it, it, there are just so many genres in like five songs. Not many groups can do that. And God, Dreamcatcher just nails it. And I just I love it so much. But with that being said, I want to know what you thought of their group songs. Which one's your favorite? What stands out? Tell me who is your bias. Tell me all that stuff in the comment section below. Also, you can find me on all of the social media platforms that I'll put in the description box below. And that's it for part one of Apocalypse Save Us Reaction. The next video is going to be their solo songs all packaged up kind of the same. So until the next video, I hope you all have a great day.